So they, they have a right hander going tomorrow. Yeah. Is, is Michael going to play first or Moreland or you decided the other? Michael probably play first. Is that a tough decision given the way Moreland's swinging? Or? I'm not taking Michael out the lineup. Hey, Walsh, what have you, have you seen him scuffle the way he's seemed to scuffle here for the last couple of weeks? This just seems very unlike Michael. Probably is unlike Michael. But uh, he can answer that question better than I can. I'm quite sure he have, and uh, he's come out of it. And uh, he's going to come out of this. Is there anything you're seeing? Just doesn't look very comfortable. And that happens. Sometimes you can't find that spot in that box to get comfortable. But uh, it's like most things when you're talking about a tremendous guy that has great eye-hand coordination. It could happen today. And there, there are guys who, with slumps, you want to let them play their way out of it, and other guys who like to depress them. No, it just depends on the extent of the song. Um, somebody in some five or fifty songs, yeah, you give them a break. But uh, in Michael's case, I'm not worried about it. Because like I said, uh, today could be the day that it, it happens. So is that, and, and I, obviously everything changes with no DH, is it your plan to that Moreland just wouldn't play this weekend, or do you have a rotation that you could give us a clue about? There's no rotation. Uh, right now, today, Moreland will be off the bench. Uh, tomorrow, we'll see. But uh, I'm not putting Michael out the line. No, no, I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, do you end up giving Beltre a day off here? Does anybody else, do you rotate guys around here too? Or? They've had their days off. We're not going to talk about days off no more. When I give them, you'll see them, but we're not going to talk about it. Well, well you, there, there was a game at some point this year where uh, Mitch played right field. He made that catch to end the game. I guess it was at Detroit. Detroit. But you wouldn't stick him out there for a start because he hasn't. He didn't go out there in the spring, or, or, or do, you, do you think he could? He could. He could. But then I'm not pulling Cruz out of there in this place. But Cruz can play left. I'm not going to pull Murphy out of there because Murphy deserved to be out there when it's his turn to play. So you just got to wait and see um, if I do anything. But. Um, Whoever's not out there, as usually is out there, there'll be a pinch hitter off the bench. It sounds like a little lot to say that Moreland's going to have to find his time when his time comes. I think that's what Evan just said. <laughs> but one, one good thing, if you view it as a good thing, is that your three National League trips are isolated in that you got three and then you go, go play back American to the American League, League three and then go back to the American League three. So it's not like that. I think two years ago, if I'm not yeah, we ran the National League schedule for a week of eight days, days, seven days. Houston, yeah. Milwaukee, oh, and Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So does that make it easier for you to get through this without the DH? Not it does. Yeah. It makes it much easier. It really does. How so? Because then it would be tough to just keep those guys that's been getting that regular playing time on the bench because we're in a stadium where one guy has to sit. So this way, um, might have to be on the bench for a few days and then get back out on the field again. Guerrero was the that that year. Guerrero, yeah. I think he only like, played twice, didn't he? No, I think you played the outfield once in the series. Any series, yeah. Well, that's right. That was your philosophy. 
So three times instead of twice. I was wrong. Yeah, he did. He played once uh, here. It might, it once might have been four. I, I mean, I just know. He once in Milwaukee. Once in Florida. Yeah. What was the other place? Here. Yeah. But something like that. Yeah. You want eleven straight games. Since the first week of the season, you guys have have. I think with Nathan have developed more communication or checking on on exactly what his status is bouncing back. How has it changed since since the first week of the season? It haven't changed. It's been the same. You know, the results are different. Right. So because the results are different, I guess it, it makes it look like there is a change. But there, there's nothing that you guys are doing differently pregame or anything like that with him. Right? It's doing the same thing that everybody's been doing. He just the first couple games of the year he. Just had a rough time going, okay. but since then, you know, um, it's been the same. It's the routine that everybody's been been the same. Okay. Hey, hey, when I was talking to him, I got the idea that, that there were some like not safety checks in the right word, but just some other stuff to gauge how he feels in terms of bouncing back. Well, the thing is, well, I don't, I don't understand that. I know he's in the trainer's room working on his exercises. That's all, all of them does. Uh, but I mean, the only thing that uh, I do, and, and I know Mike does, is uh, um, just see how he feels. And he, he's been honest with us. When he's been shaky, he said he's been shaky. How did you feel about the way he worked yesterday on the short day? Um, the results was obvious. He was very, uh, he was just as good as he was on the second day and just as good as he was on the first. He had a tremendous pop on his fastball, he had a good breaking ball. I didn't see any difference. And he certainly didn't um, uh, overwork himself. You know, it's very, uh, very convenient in the way he used his pitches. So you, you is, he have, is he available tonight? I haven't talked to him yet, but I'm gonna go out on a limb. If there's a closing situation, you'll see Nate. Now between now and then, when we talk to him, if he tell us that he don't have it, you won't see Nate. But I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you'll see him if it's a closing situation. Have, have there been times since the first week of the season when you've asked how it feels about and bounce back, or whether it's you or Mike, Mike, and he said, "No, I, I'm, I can't. I don't think I can go tonight." That one time. Okay. Is that one time to show that he's been unavailable for a game? And that, you know that, that, that he told us when we asked him right. that, you know, he's nil. There's times when we said we're not going to use him. But you, well, but you, there's not any time where we asked him and he said no. Hey, but you also have told us, you know, when you talked about relievers before, guys said, yeah, I'm available. Guys said, well, if you need me. Yeah. He's, you know, never, he's never given us that. He's either given us he feels good or he doesn't. And then there's just times when um, we just decided we're just going to stay away from him. That was early. That the, only time, the only time that was early there when you had yeah. the three different closers. And what happened is abnormal. There was quite a few games that we didn't have to use him. You know what I mean? And then there was quite a few games that we had where we put enough runs on the board that he needed work and we brought him in anyway. It was a few games when he hadn't pitched, and it wasn't a closing situation, but in my opinion, um, I needed to shut this game down that I used him. I thought about that the other day in Baltimore when he didn't use Johnson to start the inning and yeah. he had to run him in there. It's to come in, I, the only time I brought him in after something was the time I brought him in he made one pitch and got us out of it. That was Dark. Yeah, that was the only time. Yeah. But you don't, you don't want you don't want to fuck around like no. I, 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 if 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 I decide that uh, I want the closer to come in, I'm just going right to him. I'm I'm not trying to match up and then bring him in. I really, when I brought him in that time, I was trying to get Darvish through that inning. And you know, if he and we went batter for batter, and one finally got on, and that was it. But if he'd have got the next batter, Darvish would have stayed. You know what I'm saying? That was the only time. But this is the first time he's been used three times in a row. Yeah. And he's, he looked good. But like I said, we haven't had a conversation with him yet today, but we will. So like I said, I'll go out on the limb and say if there's a close situation, he's going to take the ball.
Derek is uh, coming back on extended rest tomorrow. Are you wor at all watching his pitch count, or is he? No, not watching the pitch count. You know, he got that extended rest because of the double hitter. We had to choose between he and Kobe, and we felt like we needed to keep Kobe going regularly, give Derek a break, and we did. We used him one inning out of the bullpen, and he's done his work in between. So, no, it's it's fine. Derek will be fine. He won't be on any pitch count. And so are you guys, and I know it's looking a little bit down the road, but are you guys talking about getting somebody extra rest this next time around? No, no. The times that that happened, that only happened because of those double hitters. Okay. If Nephi wouldn't have been involved with Harry in that double hitter, uh, he just got a day like a day off would have caused, okay. you know, so it pushed things back. So Thursday, Thursday's off day. Yeah. You won't shuffle anything up. No. Whoever is next in line. I mean, everybody will just get one yeah. extra day. Out yeah. Of yeah. The two guy. In looking at it, in the, the two guys would be. You could give Lewis some extra time. That would be the guy. He's in position to do that based on your rotation, and he has not had that opportunity yet. And he's, and he's quite frankly, he's struggled a little bit his last three starts. So right now you're not contemplating that? Well, right now I haven't discussed it with Mike. I don't want to give my opinion on it when I haven't discussed it with the people who sits down up in here and we finagle the things together. And um, so, um, but... That's certainly uh, something that we can take into consideration. But uh, I haven't discussed that with, with Mike. The only thing I discussed with him today is uh, what we went over in the report so far. You know, other people have opinions. You don't have an opinion. Your word is law. Your word is law. <laughs> it's not an opinion. Thanks, 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 TR. But when you start talking about that pitch, and I like I to talk with people that know a little bit more about it than I do, and who has set this type of stuff up um, consistently their the whole life. So beyond setting up the schedule, um, Kobe's fastball was a little bit off. Uh, he acknowledged that it was a little bit off. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like it was a little bit off? You mean when you say off? You mean what the velocity-wise yeah, or? Yeah. Well, I, I've, I've noticed that his, his, he's dropped a little bit in uh, velocity. But uh, usually when he drops in velocity, he makes up food with command. So. Well, I'm looking at a stat here that says the Rangers are the first team in MLB history to begin a season by playing 14 different opponents in its first 14 series. Do you think that that's a good thing for the team to see so many different opponents? bad thing or is it just an interesting fact? I think it's an interesting fact. Um, the schedule is the schedule. And um, we just play it. But I think it's an interesting fact. I, um, I really, it's amazing what you guys can look at and come up with. Every day I just show up where we're supposed to be and play it. And I know who we're playing. I know who we got next. But I never looked that far down the road. So, interesting fact. It, it ends here. So you're just play Sam. You already played their ass. Yeah. So, it's just been, um, you know, I think every every team uh, has a point in their schedule when things get a little hectic. I was just been out to shoot being hectic. So, you know, but everybody's going to have a part of the schedule where it's going to be hectic. As you've discussed frequently about sitting guys or giving guys rest and all these sort of things, do you think it's been easier for you to do this, A, because of the success you had, and B, because of the veteran presence in this, in this clubhouse? No, I think it's been easy to do because it's, it's a necessary fact. It was necessary. It has nothing to do with uh, who we playing, uh, where we are, you know, as far as being at home on the road, any of that. I do that because I live with these guys every day and I know more about my team than anybody else and I felt like it was necessary. That's the only time I do that. And so those points don't come into play. It's just the feel that I have and when I feel it's necessary, that's that.
Ron, yesterday there's Elvis's bunt looked like McCarthy caught it, but it is ruled, you know, hit the ground. He trapped it. Uh, your thoughts on instant replay? I mean, I know McCarthy said he thought, you know, baseball should look into implementing it. Do you have any? What's your take on it? My take on it: the the replays in the game of baseball is what they are. The, the person that had the best view of that bunt is the person that made the call. End of. You're a big believer in the human element. Yes. Uh, I'm okay with the home runs, yeah, because if it's a run, I want it. But everything else, we don't need to be bringing all of this different stuff into the game of baseball. Then it becomes too mechanical. The person that had the best view on that bunt called it. Now, two things happen right there. He's right or he's wrong. But aren't you open to the replay helps us get the call right, regardless of what the umpire we ain't got time to be stopping no ball game, to be checking everything that somebody want to discuss or dispute. I can see you disputing home runs because that's a run. Well, that was a run. Go out and argue like Bob Melvin did. <laughs> see if he win it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different type of run. You, uh, MLB took some action today against the umpire, an action suspended the umpire for the game. It's only one day. Uh, but does that send any message to players and managers? No, because we get suspended too. Yeah, but they don't usually get suspended. <laughs> well, I think it depends on uh, what goes down. But, um, you know, umpire has got a tough job. And, um, you know, I, I really don't want to comment about, about that because they do have a tough job. they got a tough, tough job. They really do. And yeah, there's some things that you want to argue about, and then there's some things that uh, you shouldn't argue about, or you don't want to go out there and argue about. Or some things that's so close, tell it's not worth an argument. You know. The thing that I thought was interesting was it wasn't the suspension wasn't announced about being right or wrong on calls. It wasn't about getting calls right or wrong. It was about handling of game situations. Well, and, and I think I think handling game situations, they should be the experts at it. They control the rules. So they should be experts at it. It's like everybody expect us to be experts at our job. Got to be experts at it. When you say they should be experts at it, are you saying that? You're saying handling game situations. It should be the best at handling game situations because that centers around rules, right? If, if my job as a manager was totally about rules, I'd have to know everything. I would be a reading son of a gun. I would be trying to find out all kinds of ways how I can do something and keep it. Even though I'm getting Alzheimer's, I'd have to figure out a way to keep it if that's what my job was. And I would want to be the best at that, the very best you and no one else would be able to come question me. I, yeah. As I sit here as a manager and I talk to you guys, and my, you guys write a lot of opinions about the game, I live it. See what I'm saying? There's the difference. Do, do you find umpires, for the most part, are willing to listen to you, or my, my way is the highway, you're screwed? I think they're willing to listen. A lot of it has to do with how you approach them. It's about respect. If you approach them in a respectful way, you get respectful response. If you disrespect them, you get disrespectful response. And when you charge at them, they know something is coming. <laughs> they really do. And um, sometimes they give you a lot of leeway to get out what you have to get out. And sometimes they have a, a quick trigger. trigger. And you know the ones that's quick, and you know the ones that give you leeway. So the ones that quick, you know when you run out there, I'm not coming back. So I'm going to go out there and let it all go. And you know there's ones you can go out there, and they're going to give you a chance to have your say. And then they'll say, okay, Wash, you didn't have your say. And when they say something like that, I know it's time for me to leave. And by the time they told me I didn't have my say, I said a lot. 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I just thought that that, that that whole thing sends, sends some degree of a message that we're not going to, we're taking note if umpires are baiting or um, being aggressive with managers. Well, they should. They should. They should take note if you're being baited. <clears throat> you know, aggressive. I'm okay with that. Because if I'm charging you, I don't. Uh, you're a man, yeah. so I don't expect you to call down. But I do expect you to hear what I got to say. I don't think I've ever been thrown out the game when I shouldn't. Have. I gave him reason because I couldn't hold back what I had to say, and I know it was wrong to say it. Sometimes that's just going by fifteen. Some of them let me say it and, and let me go back to the dugout. Some of them are here and won't let me go back to the dugout. How was that flight last night? Too short. I didn't get sleep. I didn't get to uh, close my eyes deep enough. Okay. okay. Too short. Huh? Yeah. As soon as I closed my eyes, it hit the ground. You're okay making that two or three times a year, though, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm used to sleeping on the plane. It certainly interrupted my sleep. Oh, I don't appreciate that. You want you want the answers? <laughs> <laughs>